friends, welcome. Welcome, welcome. Hi, Papa. <laughs> You're fine. <laughs> My dad was like, closing the door is not a problem. I'm like, hey, it's not a problem. Hi, friends. What's going on? Thank you for coming to another Friday night. I'm sorry that my live schedule has just been all over the place because it's I'm working a little bit more and I can't really predict when I'll be home to do lives. And because I have a lot of equipment going on, I have three lights up, a mic and the camera and my laptop. You know what I'm saying? So with that, it's hard to be mobile with this setup. So that's why it's best for me to just do it at home when I'm home. You know what I'm saying? Hi everyone, welcome, come on in. Hugs, hugs, hi Leah. Hi Aisha, Kima, Jesse, Elsa, Stephanie, hi Pam, Christian, Lena. Hi Daphne, hi Liv. So if you're in the, in the life for the first time hi welcome you're watching this on the replay thank you for coming for pressing the replay i want to try and be as organized as i can so this live is taking a look at the new sonya g smooth buffer there she is washed and ready to go in addition, I have all the other Sonya G brushes on standby so we could do the comparisons. And also if you need to answer, or rather, if I need to answer any questions that you might have for, uh, for in regards to Sonya G brushes, then this is where we're gonna do it. We'll also do another demo using bejeweled eyes to hypnotize <laughs> and take another look at this highlighter. Come on, come on, there we go take another look at this highlighter because it's absolutely gorgeous. I applied it on my mom today and it looked radiant. Hi, Tanya, what's going on? So with that said, I have my base on and I figured, why don't we put the, the smooth buffer to the test, but let's get into some product details about the smooth buffer. Let me see here, timestamp, smooth, buffer, deets. <laughs> because I will forget. I do have notes from Sonia's blog, sweetmakeuptemptations.com. I would highly recommend that you visit her blog, anything regarding her brushes. She answers any questions and addresses all details. So uh, with such great articulation, when it comes to brushes, she is the one. Oh, thanks, Yanni. I'm trying, I'm trying a little bit harder with these. these I got a braid. I'm impressed with myself. I did a braid. Now, this is what she has here. When phase one was created, it was to fill a blank. Phase one is this brush here from her fundamental set. There it is. We'll make comparisons in a moment. I was looking for a flat top brush, but with a density that wasn't too aggressive, still flexible, very soft, and somehow versatile. Not that easy to find. Face one was the one I was needing in my daily routine. So that was the inspiration behind the design for face one. The smooth buffer was created to replicate the same functionality as the face one, but in addition to that, easier to carry around with the size more appropriate to work on smaller areas with a diameter that fits in smaller pans. That is great attention to detail. If we were to quickly look at these two side by side. So here we have smooth buffer, here we have face one, and you can clearly see the difference in brush head size. And here is the difference in diameter size. These are both washed, so I feel they have come to their somewhat full fluff potential, if you will. And if you look at the design of the handles, Smooth Buffer takes on the sky face set design, whereas the face one is the fundamental design. And I agree with her. I think this is truly a lot easier to carry around with the tapered handle and just the beautiful ombre design on this handle is exquisite. And you have the beautiful ombre with the red, but I feel this this is like a home brush, you know, not one that you would 
carry around with you all the time. So there you go. This is the original face one and here is the smooth buffer. Let's continue to read, shall we? I also knew that bringing face one back in stock would take even longer than ever before. So it was the best time to bring on this little one in parallel. All right. What does smooth buffer do? Well, the functionality is the same. It sets, it buffs, it blends, mineral foundation, etc. Now take note, this is dyed psycho whole goat hair. So recommended that you only use this with powder products. Wouldn't recommend that you use this brush with creams or liquids. It also works with some blushes and bronzers depending on their pigmentation. I don't use, I don't use mineral foundation often, but I do use powders as a final step of my routine to set my foundation to add some subtle glow. Depends on the powder I use and what I want to achieve. Okay. So we'll set the foundation. I actually have just the Dior Forever Skin Correct Concealer on all over. So we'll buff to set the foundation, maybe do a little setting as well after the cheek products have been applied. It's satisfying when we see everything come together nicely. This is probably the favorite step in my makeup routine when I take time to inspect the final look, blend a bit more here and there. Not that it takes time, actually I do enjoy it. So I pretend I need it and make it last. So Sonia likes to buffer makeup, we love that. You know what I'm saying? Hi Chantel. Hi Val, what's going on? Okay, smooth buffer versus face one. She says the handle is different as we saw. The smooth buffer comes with the sky handle, a thinner and more lightweight handle. The ferrule diameter, This is, so Sonia goes into the measurements. If you're into the measurements, if you want that portion of the blog, I will make sure to link this entry down below. Excuse me, in regards to the density, basically the higher the density, the heavier the coverage and the more powerful the blend. It may be exactly what you're looking for, so it's perfectly fine to get something very dense. On more delicate skin, a rough and dense brush may cause irritation or could make dry patches resurface. These were mainly the issues I was facing and I wanted help with. Another risk to use a brush that is too dense for its purpose, it may move the product too much. I've encountered that problem not work in an even manner or that it may alter the underneath application. So if a brush is too dense and as she described, you go like this on your, on your base makeup, it might move your foundation and negatively impact how the makeup looks overall in the end. Now this is very important and I wanted to make sure I read this in the live because it's in regards to the price. This brush is $70. It's very expensive. But because of that, I don't mean, no, no, no. with regards to the material, Psycoho is the highest grade of goat bristles that you can see on a brush. You can go with a higher grade, but Sonia says it will be several more hundred dollars or not efficient for buffing. Now, if we, if let's say we use a squirreled hairbrush, maybe like from the Chikohoto Z series, maybe not ideal to buff because it is very soft and it's not going to manipulate the product the same way like a goat hair would, right? So even sometimes more expensive is not necessarily better if it doesn't align with the function that you're expecting from that said brush. Ah, yes. Exactly, exactly. Exactly. Is it piney rose or peony rose? I think I want to say piney rose, but let me know. <laughs> what happened to Naomi? Excuse me while I scroll up and read comments. I'm missing out. I'm missing out. <laughs> Stephanie. Well, you know, Stephanie, I actually have the Dior Correct on today. I, I gave Suku a break because I felt like I was using the heck out of it. Okay, great. Hi, Feffy. All right, continuing. The brushes pictured above, so she has on her blog post also different brushes that compare to the smooth buffer. And she goes on, you know, explaining, we don't quite know what the manufacturing details of those brushes could be, but we could only guess if the info is provided, we can make those comparisons. The brush is handmade. Okay. Not only the brush head, but the handle. Okay. 
very expensive to make. You have heard that it, prices have increased or in the process to increase in the very near future. Some fude will increase in price or will be discontinued. The demand for fude is getting higher, but the craftsmanship or materials do not necessarily follow the same curve. Saikoho quality is getting rare, and as you may have guessed, this impacts my brushes as well as as well, so we will see what happens in the future. I know for sure that the brushes will be really difficult to restock for my collection, Face One, Face Pro, Master Face, Soft Cheek, and Neochi Gay Pro. If you had them in mind, I would say, if available, go for these first. <sighs> this is what I wanted to stress because there's often speak about the cruelty-free nature of Fude brushes, and if it's really cruelty-free, if it's made with animal hair, what leads me to believe that it is, is if it's not cruelty-free, then they will stop at nothing to whatever animals they use to make these brushes, then they will just make brushes all the time. But it seems if resources are low, then they are moving with that rhythm and not necessarily with the rhythm of the demand, which I like because it's not about coming out with so many brushes all the time just to meet the demand, we have to respect, we have to respect again, the resources and the craftsmanship. And we don't want to compromise any of those. Yeah? Ooh, what are we talking about? What are we talking about? Don't mind me while I just go through these comments. Exactly, and now that Fude is more mainstream people are interested they're intrigued they're buying a lot more oh from italy hello thank you for being here hi izzy i miss my izzy hi taya yeah there is i am so upset that there is a spoiler for pat's holiday palette on makari like really like can people just have the respect of a brand releasing I know this is nothing new this is nothing new but it kind of takes the fun out of the reveal I feel all right do you want to let's do this demo fam I'm gonna do the demo oh excuse me I'm gonna cut a little closer all right let's check out the time 13 15 demo Let's get this buffer. This is a beautiful brush. The the softness is just look look at the flow. Look at the flow. It's absolutely gorgeous. Now I'm gonna use my Suku powder. I have to. I got to, okay? My Suku. I feel this is best used with a loose powder. I could be wrong. I just had a feeling. Yes, I'm gonna take a little bit. Ooh, puff it, puff, puff it, puff. All right, here we go. Oh, it it is dense, but it's so lightweight and airy. Like it doesn't move my concealer whatsoever. I do want to apply my loose powder with face one on the other side of my face so I can provide any notable differences in terms of feel. Hi, Emily. Oh, thank you so much, Aisha. Ooh, that's smooth. Ooh, that, don't, mi don't mind that. Don't mind that. And now, face one, the original you saw from the comparison close-up that the bristles on Smooth Buffer are shorter, so it's not gonna it's gonna be denser. Whereas the Face One is a bigger brush; it'll cover more surface area at once, and there's definitely a little more there's a little more movement in the bristle simply because again they are longer, so it's going to provide that extra flow on the skin. taking a little more powder. It's absolutely an exquisite brush. Absolutely. Now, 
<laughs> you know I have to. Oh. There, I can detect more density from face one for sure because we're looking at more bristle. I just love the small buffer. It feels so beautiful on the skin. And even if you have a larger face, I think it's ideal just to get into those smaller parts, right? I am curious to see how this behaves with bronzer. I just want to see that you could use it with bronzer depending on the intensity. So I got, you know, this is also a Charlotte Tilbury video. <laughs> I figured, why don't we go in with some Shaw? I'll go in with medium because I'm sure this will pick up tan a little too much and it will probably be a lot. Lijo, get the bigger brush. Get the bigger brush. Okay, let's see. Let's get some product on there. I do appreciate the size as it gets it right into the hollows but I'm pulling it, I'm turning it slightly on an angle. Well, that's beautiful and effortless. I mean, damn. Oh, this is a family show. I mean, damn. <laughs> Kids, don't say that word, it's terrible. That's really nice. I do recognize, however, that probably not the best brush to use if you don't want a lot of bronzer on, right? Because let's say if you want it less pigmentation, you will use a brush with the longer bristle. This is her soft cheek. It has a lot more flow. It's not going to pick up as much product and therefore the lay down will be a lot different than what the smooth buffer provides. And with that said, the Noche Gate Pro, which she mentioned, one of my most favorite brushes from Sonia. This is absolutely gorgeous. The teardrop shape just makes it beautifully ideal for bronzer, blush, loose powder application, pressed powder application. Now, if you just want to see, I, you know, I like the smooth buffer for Bronzer, but there's something so effortless about the Noche Gay Pro. It's beautiful. And of course, I'm switching brushes left and right. Face Pro. Face Pro is quintessential for bronzer application. Out of all the brushes Sonia has in her collection, I mean, it's crazy. Hi, Pauline, my favorite enabler. <laughs> I'm not enabling, I am just encouraging, kindly, <laughs> kindly encouraging. Hi, Karen, thank you so much. Ooh, Taya, that will be nice. Maybe she's on her way there. I mean, from, from what Charlotte has released thus far, it will be a nice addition to our collection. All right. I also wanted to take this time, in addition to showcasing Sonia G's Smooth Buffer, to also, again, apply, where is it? It's right here. Hollywood Super Glow. Now, if, I, I'm sure the people in here, squad, you know who Charlotte Tilbury is. I kind of think of Charlotte Tilbury as the realm right? If, if you're into Middle Earth genre, genre, hear me out. Charlotte Tilbury is the realm. Okay, you got different kingdoms. You got the Hollywood kingdom, right? So this is a sub, sub genre within the Charlotte Tilbury brand. You got the Pillow Talk kingdom, okay? And then you have the Magic Kingdom. So she kind of dissects each of these categories and presents a set product with this this sub brand genre, right? So the most recent highlighter is her Hollywood, right? And the other Hollywood uh, products that she has. Oh, an airbrush. 
she has the airbrush kingdom too okay so the hollywood this is a part of the hollywood genre right so this definitely makes sense in terms of the effect the glow hi bonnie Le bon maquillage is here. I love. Hey, Shannon. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You're like, I live in all those kingdoms. We hop around, okay? The magic kingdom will be like her magic cream, her magic foundation, the other magic products. I think a lot of her skincare is from the magic kingdom. Yeah. And the airbrush kingdom, of course, her airbrush bronzer, okay? the newest addition to her complexion line, the airbrush foundation, the airbrush powder, which is like one of the hallmark quintessential Charlotte Tilbury products, right? And the pillow talk. <laughs> the pillow talk, that this started with, I forgot, did it start with the lipstick first fam? Her pillow talk kingdom, yeah? I don't think I have it. No, I don't have it with me. I have a quad somewhere. It's in my drawer. But the Pillow Talk quad, the Pillow Talk instant eyes in a palette, the Pillow Talk, Pillow Talk, all the things, okay? I have the Pillow Talk blusher, the Chic to Cheek. Beautiful shade. I actually want to apply this now. I'll do it, excuse me, again. I had this demo in my most recent Superstar Glow Vigio. <laughs> Hey, Blurry. <laughs> now with Sonia's soft cheek. I'm just gonna swirl and twirl, okay? And then apply Pillow Talk Intense. Such a beautiful shade. It really is. I mean, I forgot who set this in. I forgot who wrote this in my comments in my Superstar Glow video, but they were so correct. Charlotte Tiberi does pretty so beautifully. Like, just the, the softness, the sophistication, it's just, ugh. So this is the Pillow Talk Intense. The Pillow Talk Original is very light, very, very light. So I knew that Pillow Talk Intense will be for me. And the latest is the Walk of No Shame. <laughs> As I always forget to say, walk of no shame. We got a little bit of that. Now this has a little more glow. So as you will see, it's going to provide a little more sheen, more so than pillow talk. The outer ring is matte. The pop color has that shimmer sheen, which is not glittery or textured. But the, I love the Walk of Shame blush. It's, it's just, whew, beautiful. Jessica, yes, there is an intent. There is, friend, I will look into it. It's beautiful, beautiful. Oh my gosh, are we talking about the elvish language that is actually a language from Lord of the Rings? <sighs> Back when I was like super into anime, fantasy, and all that stuff, I wanted to be an elf with powers, good at archery, you know, the typical skills. And now, and now, no other than the Hollywood, we're, we're hopping from Pillow Talk Kingdom to Hollywood. It's Hollywood. The thing is, this compact is not as shiny as the Airbrush Bronzer Compact. See what I'm saying? It's like, this is like a brushed, it looks a little dull. I don't know if that was on purpose. But the, ooh, please don't drop this. <laughs> But this color right here, you got to be kidding me. Got to be kidding me. Ooh, Pauline, I cannot wait for you to try. Did you try yet? Oh my goodness, I would love to see it. 
Let's go in with, we gotta go in with the Sonya G brush because I only got Sonya G here. I really like the sculpt too for this highlighter application. Bao Shao. Big mirror, my gosh. I mean, it's only fitting that I want the archery skills. You know, just not just the name. It is so beautiful. Just the luminous effect is crazy. I love it. Easy to apply, melts into the skin. And I want a little extra poppity pop. So I'm taking her mini cheek, a little more, right on that bing spot. I'm telling you, man. This is insane. So, now that we've applied our cheek products, we can now buff with, you guessed it, the smooth buffer. Yes. Okay. Are we ready? No other, now we're hopping into the airbrush kingdom. Okay. Airbrush flawless kingdom. Medium two, the smooth buffer. Get it all there. Yeah. Oh, this is so nice. That is just, it feels so good. It feels so good. Just flows on the skin. Does not disrupt the makeup underneath. In fact, it just blends it even more so. And just, <laughs> wait a minute, hold on. Only because CC requested this. So we gotta do it. Again, again. <laughs> we had to, we had to. Thank you, Cece. That was an important reminder. <laughs> oh, I could do this all day. I mean, really, this is crazy. The skin is looking smooth, fam. Despite my little bump it a bumps. So beautiful. Not me, the brush. <laughs> I'm like, Alicia, clarify, please. Clarify. Okay. Ooh, just look at it. Do you see? Such a special brush. Despite its density, as you can see right here, despite the density, the airbrush feel. Okay? So this brush belongs in all the Charlotte Tilbury kingdoms. It belongs in the Hollywood kingdom because it makes you feel like you're in Hollywood. It belongs in the magic kingdom because it does magic things to your face, magical things to your face. It belongs in the airbrush kingdom because it makes your skin look airbrushed, okay? Pillow talk ki kingdom either. I don't know what role it will have in the pillow talk kingdom, but I feel like it belongs there too. I feel it belongs there too. You know what I'm saying? Mmm. 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 And also, and also, I feel like if we wanted to, we could go in with a little bit. This is, nope. Let me do tan. Let me do tan. Okay. Just a little bit. I just tapped it lightly. See the tap? We got a little bit there. Just press it. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Beautiful. Oh, so even if you just press it, the bristles 
do all the blending for you. And if we needed, I have my towel here. I might have to blow my nose, sorry fam. I might have to put us in a little break. I slapped on some more airbrush and we're buffing. We're buffing. Mmm, 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 mmm. Amazing. Amazing. Which do I prefer in terms of the shade of the bronzer or the brush? I am going to do a dedicated video. As soon as the cream foundation arrives, I'll be on it. It, you know, as much as I love the face one, I do love the face one. Here's face one. It's so... I feel because it's more dense, you're going to get a little more product, just a little more product manipulation, a little bit. Not in a bad way, in a good way where it's going to melt your products together. But in terms of the design, I much prefer, much prefer the smooth buffer. Like the smooth buffer, the handle, I feel is so beautiful. So beautiful. You know, there we go. <laughs> it's like so weird. The camera, what I'm looking at on screen. Sonia's brushes are exquisitely beautiful. And People always ask me Refer or Wayne or Hakuhoro, Uchikahoro. Sonia, I feel, brings such passion onto the scene. When you read her blog entries, she loves brushes. She loves brushes, how she dissects the differences, the similarities, the, the density, the roll, the brush length, and all the, the brush type of fiber that's used and because she has all these other brushes from different brands and she felt inclined to still make her own brush line because she felt shapes were missing that is attention to detail unlike anything i have ever experienced you know what i'm saying so when people ask about sonia g brushes you are just getting such a thoughtfully <sighs> planned out design in terms of what a brush does and what it will do for you. And it all depends on your personal preference as well. Chantel, I don't think it's not a must have if you don't buff your makeup. Or if you find that the other brushes in her collection, let's quickly go over them. I forgot about my time stamps, it's fine. <laughs> if you have any of these other brushes, so if you have her master face, her master face can be good for buffing. It's gonna have a little more movement because it's not flat topped, it's domed and round. So that's gonna have a different feel. People have used her Face Pro to buff. Bigger brush covers more at once upon contact, right? That has dyed and undyed goat hair, so it's, it's a workhorse brush for sure. You could also use her Nochige Pro. This is a great brush to buff with as well, right? Her Sculpt 2 is a fan brush but I think beautiful for buffing. I mean, look at that. And the, the swirl and twirl you get from that design, exquisite. And what else? I would say the soft cheek, without a doubt. This brush, amazing for buffing. It has a longer bristle, so it has a lot more movement as you can see, right? But I feel beautiful post cheek product application. That's, and that, 
And so to answer your question, Chantel, I feel if you have any of those other brushes, you most certainly can buff your product. I think it all comes from your experience, right? Because while I understand this has a very specific role where it just melts everything together. If you don't need any melting, then then you don't need the, the smooth buffer. I do feel this is a little more limited in terms of roll because smooth buffer is for buffing, right? Whether you want to buff all your cheek products or you just want to set your foundation. For the other brushes, I feel you could set foundation, buff, bronzer, blush, contour. You could probably apply blush with this brush. I almost messed that up. I feel you could tap. You could also tapity tap tap. You know, and that's true, Cindy, and you have to really, it comes down to what you like and some brushes I feel are better for other people depending on their function and role, most definitely. I just, because as you said, I'm a collector, so anything Sonia comes out with, I'm like, sign me up. Sign me up. Oh, that's a good question. Hourglass at night. I'm gonna have to go with Walk of No Shame. As much as I love uh, at night, I really love at night. I just feel I appreciate the sheen from Walk of No Shame slightly better, just slightly. But the At Night blush shade is very unique. At the moment right now, as I'm like thinking about it, perhaps that is something I need to put in my B-roll to do a comparison. Right, Z1, Z1 is like bombity bomb bomb. Jennifer, I do have, I think I have mostly all her brushes. She had mentioned that she was creating a new, I'm sorry, this is still dirty, a new base one, but I'm not too sure if she released it yet. I agree, Taya. As much as I love Hourglass blushes, then, and, and, a lot of people, I mean, I understandably so, not too happy with them at the moment, uh, but I do think Walk of No Shame is a, is a better formula. Definitely. Scotland is here, hello there. Welcome, welcome friend. Now let's get into these eyes, okay? I might as well just do this timestamp, get, get one out of the way. Because I have to go back and see this for the rest of the demos. No worries at all. I do love Hourglass's primer. That's... Stephanie, you will love At Night. We use them both. Use them both. I love them both. I love them both. We're, we're you know, when we're comparing what is better... The one that's said to not be better is still really good. You know what I'm saying? Like, you can't go wrong with Hourglass, for sure. You can't go wrong with Hourglass. And that shade is slightly more plummy in tone, whereas Walk of No Shame is a little bit rosy. You know what I'm saying? Now, with that said, you know, I'm gonna use my finger. I'm gonna use my finger. Just, oh, don't wanna, stop, stop flipping your squad, Alicia. Pat that down. Ooh. I definitely applied way too much primer on the back of my hand. Okay. Let's get into it, shall we? This is one of her most beautiful compacts. Undoubtedly, undoubt, excuse me. 
been, I've been using this fam. I've been using it. Okay. I actually wanted to use Dream Glow again because I really loved how the purple came through because in my demo on my video, I used the middle shade primarily and then relied on the amethyst on the outer corner, but it didn't look as purpley because I think you have to then apply amethyst on its own, right? So I'm gonna take, whoop, that shade here. Oh God, banging things with my finger and just slap it on there. And look, look, is a lot more purple. And if you want this to primarily come forward as your main stage shade, then you definitely have to apply this first. Let me use my jumbo blender and just pull it through the crease. Even that is like, yeah, man. Yeah, man. Using classic crease to just buff the edges of the amethyst shade. Hi, Christine. What's up, friend? How you feeling? Christine took Flex and Flow fam. Y'all sure keep her company and come next time. <laughs> Okay. On its own, without anything else. It's beautiful. It's beautiful. Going with the smaller brush now, because I want to do this little lash line. I'm going to do her Builder 1. This is such an interesting shaped brush. But I think it's so great for the, the lower lash line. Yeah, moving into her mini booster, booster. Picking up more of the amethyst shade from Dream Glow. Hi, Pam. Yes. I love it. I'm so happy to hear that, Christine. Yes. Mm. Mm hmm. How can we incorporate? Well, see, we could go in with this middle shade now. And let me do a slightly smaller build a three with the middle shade overlapping the amethyst one. And then we'll take the first shade here and place it on the inner corner. Beautiful. Beautiful. Mm. Mm -hmm. Don't mind me. I will now. Actually, do I have it here? Yes. Going with my Blender Pro and just further blending these edges. Amazing. And now, just to lightly dust off, got a little bit of fallout. No bigs, no bigs. easily whisked away. So you see how if you apply that shade exclusively all over, I mean, it's giving you <laughs> For this eye, I want to, you know, 
I want to do a, like a little bit of a combination, I feel like, because again, this palette is designed to use the trios by themselves. You got a little guidance, right? One, two, three. But if you wanted to hop around, if you wanted to hop around, I actually want to see how Happy Glow is with the Love Glow with a little bit of Seduce Glow. <laughs> so let me take the Happy Glow Matte Shade, which is like a beautiful peach, and hit that with the crease. This shade on its own is lovely. Did you all see Kalechi's IGTV video using this palette? She's a riot. I love her. Tell them. Tell them, Taya. Tell them again. Man, every time I use Midnight Sun, You inspired me. I gotta pop into that palette again. It's just so beautifully executed. Right? It is, Lorraine. I agree. I agree. And when the brush is well made, even though it's bigger, it's not gonna get out of hand. At all. At all. D this is the Detail Pro. Shout out to Tina from over the fancy face. When I saw her use the detail plow, apply her crease shade, I was like, what am I doing? I need to follow suit. Blend a pro now with Love Glow. Tap it, tap, tap on the Alta V. Oh yes. So now we're building up this color story, fam. We're, we're building it up. I think I want to hit the inside as well. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I love how the matte kind of transformed when you're mixing with the happily, happily, let's try that again, happy glow peach matte is turning more into like a terracotta gig. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? If we wanted, well, we got, we could go several ways. We could try this new formula that Shar introduced. It's a beautiful, like, shiny copper shade. Isn't that lovely? I have some leftover primer. I'm tapping that on the center between the matte, yeah? Because I want this to successfully adhere to my lids. Now, taking that shade, right? See that? Done. Ta da! Okay. That's shiny. That is shiny. Woo! Let us now tap just a little bit, a little bit of the Love Glow Metallic on the edges. Just a little bit. Using Sonia's Soft Shader. Oh, that is absolutely gorgeous. And doing so over the matte, I feel amplifies the saturation of this color even more. And the gradient from that metallic into the copper one is gorgeous. Most definitely. Taking a little bit here, just Further buffing, picking up a little more of the Happy Glow Matte. Amazing. <gasps> they where? You know what? Hold on. Oh gosh. Close. 
Where did Pauline give me an illustrious super chat? <gasps> Where? I can't see it. I missed it. I missed it. Pauline, you better stop. It's killing me, man. You're killing me, friend. You are killing me. You know, I blame my update window being on top of my comment box. I couldn't see it. Thank you so much, Pauline. You are beyond generous. <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> it's okay. Oh my gosh. Let's do Seduce Glow on the bottom. Or Pauline, are you talking about this palette or Midnight Sun? Oh, what brush, what brush, what brush? Worker Pro, my, one of my absolute faves. I'm taking the metallic pulling it under so beautiful connecting it here I think this might have to be one of my most favorite hypnotized curations from Char. I'm so sorry. I'm like not saying what I'm doing. I'm taking this shade in a part of the lash line. <laughs> oh my God, this is so funny. Someone telling Pauline that she's an enabler too with her coach purchases. <laughs> Are we all enablers here? Okay, the lighter Happy Glow shade on the inner corner. Tappity tap tap. Amazing. And I'm pulling it a little higher. Cool. I love. I also wanted to show that this shade right here is rather nice as a lash line smoker. So if you tap this on the lash line, I think it shows pretty nicely. Despite everything that we have on the lid, it's still giving us a little something something. And that's why I find this is more versatile than uh, last year's with Starry Eyes to Hypnotize because that black matte, although I understand how black shadow could be very helpful, I do think a brown is a little more user-friendly. And you can use this brown on top of the Happy Glow Trio with the Love Glow Trio, even with the, what is it called, Dream Glow Trio. You know, it's just, I feel you got a lot more options to hop around and combine more so than you do with last year's holiday palette. And look how much punch that brown has. Now granted, I'm using, a, I'm using Sonia's Smudger 2. This picks up great product and how it just dabs it on there is amazing. Too much, too much. I think it's time, fam, that
We're back. Okay. Okay. I got two flat tops for you. Oh my gosh. Don't break it. All right. This is the Chikohoro F02. And this is Sonia's. I washed this brush is significantly more dense and tighter packed. So this does not move the same. This will move your foundation. So I would then use this brush to apply mineral foundation or powder foundation so you can swirl and twirl. This will pick up a lot more product than this one. So this is more ideal for buffing. This is more ideal for powder foundation application, or you can lightly tap your bronzer or contour onto the hollows of your cheeks. Same thing with the refer flat top. Now this is undyed, or excuse me, well yes, undyed goat hair. So you could actually use this to apply your foundation. It's a very small brush, so I feel like you'll be there all day. But if you swirl and twirl, so if you do this instead of this, you'll get it on a lot quicker. Quicker. Choon, 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 right? This also can be good for pressing contour because it's a lot smaller than these three, right? So you will get a lot more precise here on the hollows. Now, time has come to compare. Walk of no shame. I gotta put mascara on. Walk of no shame with that night. So here is Walk of No Shame. Yeah? Try to get a really good swatch here. So you see, At Night has a little more red in it. A little more red in it. Why not? We shall then apply that on the cheeks. Because I, I know it's going to be hard to see, but maybe you could get a, an idea. So see how much more of a, a red toned at night has versus the Pillow Talk Intense Shade versus Walk of Shame. Like, I feel at night gives you that red, like that plummy red hue, which is beautiful. You see what I'm saying? It's, it's so hard. So I, you, you now detect that I have like a lot more blush on. So I got to now buff it down. What a great opportunity now for this brush. Huh? Huh? That really made it look better. It made it just look smoother, more airbrushed. In person, because I'm in front of my lights, I have three of them, is taking away some of the color at night. I feel Walk of No Shame is a little easier to, to use because you can apply a little too much at night. This at night is, I think, Hourglass's most pigmented blush, to be frank, because a lot of their other brushes, for me anyway, have to be built. This, the at night, you better be careful with this guy. Okay? Now, I'm going to... I was like, you're going to what, Alicia? <laughs> Apply mascara. <laughs> oh my gosh. Let me curl my lashes again. And no other than Dark Star. Which has been just an outstanding mascara. see here the one and only Ooh. all 
in all, fam, I've been really happy with my purchases. I have been. I am planning on filming a how to navigate holiday makeup shopping video, which is probably my first like financial advice video, not really financial advice, but more shopping advice video. Cause this is also advice I have been giving myself and I just wanted to share some strategies to not, it's not so much to not spend anything, right? Because going cold turkey for me, not spending money, it just doesn't work. It makes me want to spend more, right? That's just not how, like anytime you tell someone not to do something, they're gonna to wanna to do it. Right, so if I tell myself to not buy something, I'm gonna to wanna to buy something. But if I give myself some limitations, I feel I'm more successful in not making impulse purchases, more thoughtful ones. And especially now with what's happening, it was clearly evident with the nonstop sales that have been occurring ever since this whole thing began that as I mentioned in my last live or video the sales this coming holiday season are going to be nuts because I feel retailers are trying to make up for lost time and they will stop at nothing to offer us the best possible deal so with that, I find all the all this makeup that's coming out to not necessarily rush and get it or just not get everything. That's why I didn't get Rare Beauty because first of all, I was telling this to my friend, I feel like everyone and their mom is reviewing Rare Beauty. It's like the thing to review right now. The YouTube algorithm is... It, that's on the Altu algorithm radar. And for me, it's something that I don't feel like I need. I, I don't, I've been using, like my Suku fam has just impressed me beyond. And that's all I care about. And I just spent a lot of money with their cream foundation. I ain't gonna buy Rare Beauty too, you know what I'm saying? That's, and then exactly with Lisa Eldridge dropping her lipsticks, I think in November or October, someone let me know, I might be screwing that up. Like those lipsticks are exquisite, exquisite. Like all these other brands, I can't do it. I can't get it all. I cannot get it all and I'm still applying mascara. <laughs> oh, we're still here applying mascara. Okay. Isn't it Jessica? Lisa Eldridge has just beautiful products. Most definitely. So one of my strategies, and I'll share more when I film that video, is to write out your wish list. Write it out. Write it out, type it out, and evaluate on that wish list what you really, really want versus what you kind of want, but you're like, you were overtaken by the newness. So you just put it on the wish list, but it could go on the wish list. But you gotta give it time, you gotta think about it first. <gasps> what? Hi, Charlotte. Good night, my love. I will hopefully see you soon on the next video. Thank you for stopping by and sleep well. Uh, 
isn't that the truth? She will just sabotage all your plans. Well, we gotta be ready. We gotta be ready. Oh no, Charlotte is not done yet. She is about to drop so many things. It's gonna be insane. We gotta be ready. Like, the brush set from Charlotte, I'm definitely not getting because Avi, Avi, I got my Sonia, I got my Hakuhodo, I got my Chikahodo. If Hakuhodo drops a special holiday set limited edition, like I might get that. I just might. And then, where's my lipstick? Hello? Ooh, oh, wait, wait. Speaking of, mwah. Velvet Fawn is ridiculous. Oh, hey, Kelly. This is Shiseido. My eyelash curler is Shiseido. The look is complete. We have eye number one. We have eye number two. Let's do a little wide. Oh. We got all our cheek products on and all this all this stuff on. Oh, I think it was a good makeup day. It was a good makeup day. Man, oh man. This this highlighter amazing. Amazing. I'm keeping the box. I think this box is so beautiful. <laughs> okay. Definitely putting back Bejeweled in the Bejeweled box. Because we're keeping that one too. Most definitely. What can I say, fam? All the products I use on this live, I absolutely adore and love. Specifically, the Smooth Buffer. Like this little brush. Get the heck out. It's so pretty. <gasps> yeah. You got the evergreen set. Oh my gosh. I almost did, but I was like, you you better stop. You better stop. Whew. All right. I think we've done it, fam. We have made it through another live. Thank you so much for tuning in. I hope this video was helpful. Primarily, I wanted to present the smooth buffer, its role, the differences between phase one, kind of helping you decide if you need it or you don't need it, and taking another stab at Bejeweled Ice to Hypnotize because I do think this is Charlotte's best hypnotized palette curation. I mean, it's so... It's just vastly comprehensive in terms of how you could skip around or just use the trios exclusively. And no matter what, you'll have just a beautiful look. The Walk of No Shame blush is beautiful. And the Superstar Holly, the Hollywood Superstar Glow highlighter. Oh my gosh. Just so that this is the finale. Okay, this is the finale. We have to now. <sighs> get in one more just one more stab with BK Beauty sponge and because we have to see the effects it's just so pretty and also the eyeshadow. Look at the eyeshadow. Look at that one. The special metallic shade. We had to end it there. So friends, thank you so much for coming. It's always a pleasure to have you. <sighs> I hope to have uh, another video up either tomorrow or Sunday. Gotta start planning my September favorites because before you know it, the end of September will be here and I will try to get that 
excuse me, holiday video shopping strategy video up soon. So we will be ready for, I wanna say November, but I feel like they're gonna start rolling in in October. <laughs> Knowing the beauty industry, they're gonna hit us hard very early. Thank you all so much for coming. I'll be sure to check your comments down below if you're watching the replay. Thank you so much for stopping by. Everyone, I hope you have the, an amazing rest of your evening, day, morning. <laughs> if you're going to sleep, have a good rest. And until then, fam, I will see you soon. Bye-bye.